Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. So as you probably saw in my anniversary review, um, the, my favorite palm top is the Scion 2, or at least of the ones we reviewed last year. So from October, I've been using it as my everyday device to see just how practical it would be in 2021. If you haven't already seen it, you might want to check out my video introducing the Scion 2, link here. Otherwise, let's rock on. Compared to modern devices, the Scion 2 is a little bulky, but its robust design and the fact it'll fit in a jacket pocket means you can carry this everywhere, so it is possible to use it as an everyday device. Its robust design and drop-down cover means that I wasn't particularly worried about it getting damaged, although I did use a case for it, but I drew the line at attaching it to my belt like a 2000s phone. Let's start with the obvious limitations. So first of all, this is not a communication device. There's no WhatsApp, there's no phone signal, there's no texting. It's also not a multimedia device. You're not gonna be watching videos on here or listening it to MP3s. Even if we ignore the storage limitations, the lack of a headphone jack and the piezoelectric speaker, to decode an MP3 takes a little bit of computing power. The original Apple iPod had two 80 megahertz ARM processors. And if I use MP3s on my Janata, it usually runs the CPU at about 50%, which suggests you need around 100 megahertz megahertz to decode a 120 kilobits per second mp3 in real time. So a 3 minute mp3 to be decoded on a 0.9 megahertz CPU would take approximately 5 hours and 55 minutes. So playback is going to be a little It's not going to make a great ebook reader either. If we assume an average 65 characters per line and about 35 lines per page, 32K will only store about 14 pages of a book. So you'd need a lot of data pack. Don't get me wrong, there were bigger memory packs available. If you had a 256K pack, you could store a reasonable size novel. However, given there's only two lines, there is going to be a ridiculous amount of scrolling in order to read that book. As for the internet, well, that just isn't going to happen. So that brings the question, what do you need from an organiser? So, I, I think to-do lists are an absolute must. We all have to-do lists, whether it's for work, for home, that list of things we're never actually going to do. Also a notepad to note down any ideas or thoughts, perhaps film recommendations from other people, or bits of information that we need to recall at a later date. If this was the mid-90s, I might consider a phone book necessary, but these days, that's all on your phone, so that's fine. I think any portable device should have a calculator, and probably the main thing necessary is a diary with some kind of alarm or reminder function. Other things you might want are a countdown timer, perhaps some games for those moments of downtime, and a standard alarm function will be handy. So so I put a games pack in, a blank data pack, and off we go. So the Scion 2 organizer doesn't have a to-do list. It has a database file. That's essentially the only notepad or to-do list in here, but it's easy enough to use it as a to-do list. Simply label it to-do so you can find it again later. Perhaps make it specific for work or home. If you have a few to-do lists, it can be useful to use a couple of symbols so that when you search, you find all the to-do lists at the same time. After that, you could move down and add whatever you need to do to your list. And then just press enter to save. The database file is limited to 16 lines and to 254 characters, so a little bit less than a tweet, but that's usually more than enough for a to-do list. It would be handy if you could add a notification, but unfortunately on here there's no way to do that, so you'll need to pop in and check your lists frequently. You can keep more than one data file. Of course, you can keep them on the data pack, so you could have as many as you like. There is one small issue with this, and that is that each time you edit the data file, instead of the data file being erased and replaced, it's simply replaced and the original one 
it's still there but not accessible. This means that a 1k data file that gets rewritten now takes up 2k in storage. So rapidly you could see you would run out of room. For this reason it's better to keep the data file in the internal RAM or if you've got one on a RAM pack. So there's a couple of issues with this. Although when you go into edit you can add a new line to the bottom, what you can't do is put a line in between. So you can't press enter here and add a new line or press shift and down or any of these things that you think might work. So if you've put something at the top, it stays at the top and there's no way to move these items around. You can of course delete them once you've completed the task. Um, so you can delete them easily. But for example, if you started typing here, you can't then drop it down a line for the same reason you can't add a line in between. Not a big issue for this type of data, but for other things, it could be handy. The data bank actually works very well as a notepad, again, limited to 254 characters. Um, but if you just want in a quick note about something, then it's perfectly useful. Again, it's easy to find notes. Once you've put them in, all you do is put in enough letters to bring it back up as you search. So here are some other Scion related things. On the databank file, there's a couple of limitations. The files can't be sorted into any kind of order and they're basically stacked according to when they were written. So if you go into find and just hit enter, it goes to the earliest written file and then the next one after that until you reach the end. You can't decide to list them alphabetically either. It's not a big issue since the find function is pretty good. If you're enjoying this video, a like and a subscribe would be very much appreciated. If not, well, sorry about that. So what about the diary? Well, making an appointment is super easy. Simply go to the time, to the date, and add an entry. Once you've done that, pressing enter will save it at that time slot, and you can add an alarm or not. There's a few significant limitations though. Once you put an entry in, although you can edit it by pressing enter, you can't change the time of it. Also, there's no way to specify the length of the event. So for example, here, it's listed at four o'clock, but there's nothing at 4.30 or five or 5.30, etc. Guess you could put multiple entries in for the same diary event. But as there's no copy and paste function, filling the half hour slots to demonstrate the duration is time consuming. It also takes up a lot of memory, and so you'd quickly exceed the RAM limit. Your diary would grow exponentially. The other limit on here is of course that you need to scroll through in order to see what's happening on any given day. So to see if you're free means starting at the beginning of the day and scrolling through all the separate time slots looking for entries. For this reason, I opted for putting work days as starting at 9 a.m. and anything that happens all day is starting at 9 a.m. also. This makes it easy for me to see if there's an all day event on or not. It's not all bad though. The list function quickly lets you see what your next appointment is and pressing enter will show you the one after that, etc., etc. So for a quick look to see what's coming up, it's very easy to use. For birthdays and anniversaries, I've resorted back to the database program, simply putting in a month, and then having a list of any anniversaries that are going on. The difficulty again with this is I've got a 16 line limit. So if there was a lot going on, I wouldn't be able to list it on one data bank file. I'd need more than one. In addition, if I look between the 10th and the 22nd and want to add another one and I've not put a slot in, then there's no way for me to copy them down. Instead, I have to re-enter the entire file. A little frustrating as you can imagine. One other thing is that we're missing symbols. So they can be added into programs using the character functions, but you can't put exclamation marks, question marks, at symbols into data file entries or into a diary entry. So you couldn't, for example, put a question mark in a diary entry to symbolize that you weren't sure it was happening, it was tentative. And you couldn't put an exclamation mark to show how excited about an event you were. There's no stopwatch or countdown timer on here, which is a little bit lacking in my opinion. But one of the great things about the Scion 2 is if you don't have a function that you would like, you can simply write one. And it was relatively easy to write a countdown timer, and here it is. A 
I'll put the code in the description below. I also made a magic eight ball for those difficult decisions in life. I also made a dice roller for D&D, &D, so you can choose how many sides you want on your dice. And a simple miles to the gallon calculator, so that I could see how efficient my new car was. I mean, it didn't manage to do that, but if it did, that would have been good. So one of the things I discussed in using a PDA in 2021, link above, is the fact that these old devices, these legacy devices, are useful for keeping sensitive information on because they're not connected to the internet. That makes them pretty difficult to hack. This doesn't come with any kind of lock screen or password protection, although there is one you can download. Um, but instead, I thought I would simply write one myself, because as I've already said, you can do anything you want on here, pretty much. So here it is, it's called lock, and when you press the button, it just turns itself off, and when you next turn it on, it requests the pin number. If you enter the wrong pin number, then obviously it won't unlock, and in fact just turns itself off back off again. So I'll pop the code below in the description and then you can secure your Psyon too. If you want to write a few programs of your own, I would recommend getting this. I'll pop a link below to the um, electronic version. Um, it's a really good book. This is what I've used to learn a little bit of programming. If like me, you find it easier to learn from a video and you'd like to learn some OPL programming, pop a comment below. If there's enough interest, I'll do a short tutorial series on OPL and um, it'll cover all the basic stuff, I'm not going to do anything complicated, I'm not a programmer, um, but it is applicable to the Series 3, the 5 and the 7, so actually could be useful for a lot of people out there. Once I've made a program and it does exactly what I want, I normally transfer it to a data pack just to save space on the internal RAM. When transferring to the data pack though, it's interesting just how slow it actually is. Copy into the data pack can take quite a while. So here's my magic eight ball. It's about 2K in size. We're gonna copy it and its instructions. So it's currently on the A drive. And we're gonna send it to the C drive and we're gonna rename it ball. So we need to time it so you can see how long it takes. And we're off. And there we are, so nearly 1 minute 40 seconds. Presumably this is something to do with the way the data packs write data, because moving it back is extremely quick. And here we go. And done. So not even 2 seconds, just to double check it's there. Press a key when ready. So with that in mind, while it's important to back up to the data packs periodically should the RAM drive fail, just remember that it is going to take you a while to shift things over. So to answer the question, can you use a Scion organizer in 2021? The answer is clearly yes. It's very good. There are lots of things that could be better. For example, having a separate notepad would be useful and being able to put durations in the diary entries would be really useful. A battery meter would be useful. Perhaps building into the ROM a stopwatch would be really useful. What if the Scion engineers have done exactly what I've done and used a series two for a while and then come up with some better ideas? Hmm. But wait, they did. And here it is, the Scion 2 LZ. We now have a four lines of display at 20 characters each. So I do have one blank line on mine, I'm afraid. Um, but we've got a lot more functions. Straight away, you can see we've gained the battery meter. The diary now has timed events. We've got a separate notepad. There's a lot to explore, and we'll have a proper look at this in a future video. So recently I came across some work by Andrew Menadu. He has been playing around with the Scion organizer in conjunction with a Pico Pi. What he's actually done is used a Pico Pi to create a control board that mimics the actions of one of the data pack. Because it allows access to an SD card, this means that he's been able to store pretty much every bit of software ever produced for the Scion 2 on a single data pack slot. Well done that man. I've put some links to his work below, do check it out, absolutely amazing. 
I recently acquired a data link, so I'll be doing a video at some point on connecting to Windows 10 and also on some of the other software that is available for the Scion 2, as well as a full review of the Scion LZ once I've got to grips with it. Perhaps you use or have used a Scion 2, perhaps you've got a piece of software you wrote or that you use and you think I should absolutely check out. If you do, pop a comment below, love to hear from you. In the meantime, if you want a heads up on the Scion LZ, go and check out the emulator, I've put a link for it below. My name's Hugh, this is Handheld Computing, thank you for watching.